Hey there, can you help me? Depends on who's asking. Oh, me? My name's Stella. It's nice to meet you. What are you doing out here? I'm looking for help, silly. There's a bunch of ragers around the corner, so I'm staying here. What seems to be the problem? It's my friend Murphy. He went to the film store, but it's been a while, and I'm starting to worry. Can you check on him for me? You should look for your parents. Where are they holed up? In Quincy. That's where my mommy died. I don't know about my dad. My mom said I would get to meet him someday. Does that little scam actually work on anyone? What's a scam? Okay, I'll try to help. Really? Thank you. It's the big yellow building down the street. Can you bring Murphy back safely for me, please? Everybody, got some news. Followed by, yes, followed by flashes, blinding flashes. What's going on? Sounds what's of happening? explosions. Did you hear the news? We're uh, trying to get confirmation. Well, what's happening? We seem to have lost contact with our affiliate stations. Oh, that is bad news. We, we do, we do have, we do have coming in. That's um. Oh no. Confirmed reports, I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York. Oh my God, it's happening. Pennsylvania. Oh God. My God. Oh God. So it's, it's finally happening. Oh, oh, no this is just a drill. Oh, this can't really be happening. Get out of here. Terminal should open this.
is it. Ain't enough food around. Can't think about nothing else when you got a hole in your tummy. We need some water. Soon. Shakes bad. Haven't slept in days. Excuse me. If this is my life, kill me now. It's your business to know what you're putting in your child's bloated belly. That's why sugar bombs are engineered to please both your child and not damage his or her tender, tender brain. Mmm, they taste so amazing! And they make you remember everything you read. Quick, absorb that book! Of course, Mother! Sugar bombs are made with nutrients and stimulants. Stimulants and nutrients. Weaving taste and performance together in a potent breakfast cocktail that'll provide a day-to-day -day breakthrough in your child's life. I can see the future! Nice. Sugar bombs may last up to 12 hours. After that, it's anyone's guess. Buy two boxes and get a third half free until supplies last. Cereal has seldom been so You're crispy, so fresh when it hits your stomach. Uh. Blasting your uh. with 5,000 taste volts of volcanic uh. oil. Sugar bombs the ground up to prime you for lunch. Just give up now! Value is relative, but relatively what is value? At Fallon's, each price represents our pact with the customer to bring things down to a manageable level of value that also takes luxury into account. Mass production techniques may have brought things up to speed, but it's time-honored, well-worn, oak and varnish tradition that really keeps things classic. 
Ah, got it. That's progress. I'm coming for you. You're gonna regret this! I've been admiring your handiwork. We all have. You put on a good show. Maybe I'm not useless after all. Our new friend surely has some questions. Perhaps we should introduce ourselves. Name's Murphy. Head upstairs to the top floor. I've got a proposition for you. And don't worry. We'll play nice this time. recommending this place to my friends. And a sense of humor, too. I like it. Sorry for any misunderstanding. We're a shoot-first, ask-questions-later kind of place. 
Never can be too careful with looters breaking and entering these days. Don't misunderstand. We're not criticizing you. Those were fair kills. You didn't know who we were, and we didn't know you from a random looter. Thankfully, Stella fessed up. Hey, I was just trying to have a little fun. How was I supposed to know they weren't a common criminal? Yeah, yeah, we're all friends now. Let's skip to the part where you help me. That's rather presumptuous. After taking out two of our crew, I wasn't under the impression we owed you anything. Well, that all depends. What kind of help are you looking for? Hold on. I have some questions first. Alright, humor me. What do you want to know? What's the history of this place? Uh, this place was originally the HQ for a large department store chain called Fallon's. The guy who ran the company was one of those conspiracy nut jobs who thought a big war was coming. Turned out he was right. The company had a large fallout shelter constructed underneath the building, and the rest is history. The survivors of that bunker and their offspring ended up being the ones to repopulate most of the Commonwealth. Eventually, they made Diamond City their primary settlement, and this place kind of fell by the wayside. Which is a polite way of saying it became a prison. Someone needs to deal with the Commonwealth scum after all. I don't understand. Just kill them and be done with it. Where's the fun or profit in that? You can only kill somebody once. Slavery, on the other hand... So what's your story, anyway? Tell me about yourself. I'm originally from Detroit. Used to make pickup trucks there at the Ford plant before the war. Thing about being a ghoul is, eventually you feel like you've seen it all. Detroit was never much to look at, even before the war. A century after the bombs fell, I started itching for a change of scenery. Heard rumors about the Corvega plant in Lexington. Decided to make my way east to Boston to check it out. What happened after that? When I arrived in Lexington, the rumors I'd heard about the auto plant turned out to be phony. So I started looking for something else. Joined up with a group called the Minutemen. That was a few months before the Battle of Diamond City. Mostly been doing that ever since. Until it all went to shit. What do you mean? What happened to you guys? You're not from around here, are you? How about we do the abridged version for now? The short of it is, everyone I served with in the Minutemen is either dead or turned raider. What do you do here? After what you've seen, you really need me to spell it out? We're slave traders, not gonna sugarcoat it. We deal in raiders, mostly. Capturing them, and once their spirit is broken, selling them to slave owners up and down the eastern seaboard. A few miscreants we let work for us, if they show promise. But the main goal is to ship these degenerates outside the Commonwealth. Could you tell me anything about the kid? Uh, Stella hasn't had it easy. Her dad was never in the picture, and her mom raised her at University Point most of her life. Until the Institute torched the place. I met Stella and her mom Judy after they fled to Quincy in 2285. Helped them build a life for themselves there. And then the Quincy Massacre happened. What was the Quincy Massacre? Uh, we can get into that some other time. Let's just say that life's greatest dangers often come not from external enemies, but from our supposed friends who pretend to work for the common cause while scheming to sabotage it. When the Minutemen betrayed Quincy, most of the residents ended up slaughtered by the gunners, Judy included. I managed to get Stella out, and we made our way north to Concord. And that traitor Preston followed us here. I'm telling you, he was working with Clint the whole time. And now he's right down the street. And you still won't do anything about it. We've been over this, Stella. Innocent until proven guilty. You want me to focus on keeping this place safe from the gunners? Or waste time dealing with the loudmouth fool in the silly hat? Both. I want justice for what they did to my mom. And like I explained, you'll get it, if you have patience. Garvey will get what's coming to him eventually, but for now... Wait, hold up. You hear that?
I was afraid those guys might show up. Thanks for your help. You all right? That was interesting. It's complicated. What do you know about the Gunners? Gunners are just raiders with better armor. It's a little more than just better armor. But I like your spirit. No one's really sure where the Gunners started out. But something changed about eight or nine years ago. Out of nowhere, they started sporting plasma weapons, advanced combat gear, and even vertebrates. Doesn't make any sense. Where did they get all that stuff from? That's a good question. I guess... I don't know. People bitch about the Institute, but look at what's really been going on. Quincy, GNN, 
Mass Bay Medical, Mass Fusion, Two Vaults, and all the major freeways. It's the Gunners, not the Institute, who've been gaining the most ground in the Commonwealth. How much of a threat are they? No one invests the resources to capture those strategic locations without a larger agenda. Someone's behind it. We're just not sure who or what. At this point, there's not much to keep the Gunners from taking Good Neighbor, Diamond City, or the towns up north. Is there a reason that you're bringing this up? You mean besides the fact that we just got ambushed here in Concord? There needs to be a group to stand up to these assholes. Someone strong, organized, and local. And I'm not talking about the Minutemen. I mean someone with real stones. So, what did you have in mind? I'm gonna need some more in the way of details. Ultimately, you gotta ask yourself who you want protecting things. A bunch of Muppets who can't defend what's theirs, or hardened killers who can handle themselves. Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. Uncertainty is sometimes better than an overt threat. If you build a reputation for being a little crazy, your opponents are never sure what messing with you will cost. So, they tend to avoid finding out. Settlers can't instill that kind of fear. Whether it's against raiders, synths, mercs, super mutants, or even mole rats. They've proven time and again that they're incapable of deterring threats to their property over the long term. The Minutemen worked for a while, but they ended up self-destructing. What happened to the Minutemen? Depends who you ask. The challenge with running a militia is that volunteers inevitably have their own agendas. For a coalition to last, there needs to be a chain of command where members don't feel too constrained by your influence. But still fear you enough to follow your lead. Maintaining morale requires convincing soldiers to think less about themselves and more about the group. Involve them in a cause, a crusade against a hated enemy, and make them see their survival as tied to the success of the militia as a whole. Of course, it's easier said than done. Somewhere along the way, we lost that sense of common purpose. Infighting took over, and the militia gradually splintered into different groups. Some became raiders or joined the gunners. Others just disappeared. Quincy was the final blow. And now we're back at square one. Jesus, what a mouthful. What's the plan again? Whether it's the Gunners, the Institute, or who knows what other groups are out there, they're too powerful to take on directly. So we've got to use our weaknesses as strengths. If your enemy is big and you're small, then by extension, you're fast and they're slow. You're hidden and they're exposed. So we break our forces into independent cells who can operate elusively and autonomously, fighting only the battles we know we can win, capturing the enemy's weapons and gear along the way. And using those tools against them in the next encounter. That way the enemy is supplying us, and we grow stronger as they grow weaker. Makes sense, I suppose. What's our next move? The Gunners are calculated and cautious. It's gonna take them a while to figure out what just happened, which provides us an opening. The critical elements in any campaign are speed and adaptability, making decisions faster than the enemy can. Striking first, before the Gunners have time to assess and formulate a response, may throw them off balance. Their nearest outpost is up on the freeway, southeast of Walden Pond. That's likely where the attack came from. The freeway wasn't particularly well guarded to begin with. Probably even less so after the raid. I want you to head over there, take out their remaining guards, and steal their weapons, so we can fortify our presence here in Concord. Prove to me you can handle that task, and I'll have a larger project for you when you return. And if you want bonus points, there's rumor of a raider stash over by Corvega. We'll mark the location on your map.
God, I hope there's a bounty on you.
Hey. Wasn't sure you were gonna make it back in one piece. Any trouble out there? Not sure I'd call it smooth, but it's taken care of. Hey, anyone you can walk away from. Here, got you a little something for the trouble. Let me know when you're ready for the next job. Any news on your side? Just been cleaning things up here from the raid. Speaking of which, if you want to lend a hand, feel free to use the workshops around here. There's one on the first floor and also a second one in the bunker. Have a look around and make yourself comfortable. started on the next phase, let me explain. Just point me to the action. I got a pal and good neighbor. Goes by the name Hancock. After what happened at University Point and Quincy, he's got some concerns about the next shoe to drop in downtown Boston. What do you mean? Every urban area has pressure points. Centers of gravity that hold a region's economy together. Take out the pressure points and it inflicts a disproportionate amount of economic pain. Trade suffers, supply chains stop moving, and eventually people start going hungry. The fabric of society starts to crumble. The Institute knows this, so do the Gunners. It's not hard to guess what their next targets might be. Is Diamond City really in danger? It's not like there's raiders pounding on the gate. Maybe not raiders. But they got super mutant hordes right around the corner, and since have infiltrated their local government. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Diamond City isn't the settlement most in danger of fallen. Good neighbor is. Why do you say that? You mean besides the elevated sniper perches surrounding the town, and the relative ease of blockading the entrance so no food or supplies can get in or out? Uh, yeah. Obviously. It's like this. If your settlement is poor, you can't afford adequate security. If your security stinks, your enemies eventually take notice, and sooner or later, they'll either demand tribute or conquer you. So, if you want your city not to get pillaged, you need a functional economy. It's hard to pull off when your clientele is primarily low-end chem addicts and drifters. There's no real money in catering to riffraff like that. For good neighbor to survive, it needs to attract a higher class of clientele. Makes sense, I suppose. Bottom line, Hancock wants to clean up good neighbor. Starting with the chem dealers selling drugs to kids, the thugs harassing visitors for protection money, the back alley murders, the gang activity, and the never-ending stream of aspiring scam artists. He wants all of them gone. Not detained, not bargained with, just gone. Makes sense to get rid of the trash. What's the catch? As mayor, he can't be officially connected to ordering hits on his constituency. So, he's contracted out certain jobs on the down low to a few people he trusts. That's where you come in. I need some details here. I have no idea what I'm getting into. There's three jobs I want you to start with. First job is to entrap an old ghoul who's been trying to rip off Hancock. Second one is to eliminate a trigger man gang infesting the town's warehouses. And a third task is to take out a few miscreants plaguing the local economy. You can do the jobs in any order you want. I've written down all the details on this holotape, including the local contacts to get started. Once the jobs are complete, cross them off your list and we'll move on to the next phase. And one more thing. You did us a solid with that gunner job. Look, check the desk in my room. There's a holotape in there. Might have some answers you're looking for. A holotape? What's on it? Tough to explain. You need to see it for yourself. But the gist is, back in Quincy, when Stella's mom was bleeding out in my arms, the last thing she told me was to pull a holotape out of a cargo pants pocket. Not the type of thing you expect to hear in someone's dying words. I asked her why, 
but didn't get an answer. She just whispered the show at the Stella when she was old enough. And just like that, she was gone. It took a while before I could bring myself to read what was on the tape. Part of me wishes I hadn't. I appreciate you telling me all of this. I know it's difficult. Just promise me that whatever happens, you don't mention a word of this to Stella. She doesn't know, and that's the way it's got to stay for now. Don't worry. I'll keep your secret. And hey, good luck out there.